contest chair, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. I am like the Michael Jordan of relationships. Just when he played baseball, not basketball. My husband and I met at a karaoke bar, but that doesn't make for a great story. So instead, we tell people we met at farmersonly.com. It's ironic because neither of us can keep an artificial plant alive, much less farm, but they have great commercials. My husband, Andrew, is a consultant and expert communicator. He did not know what he was signing up for when we started dating or that I would be his most challenging client. Let's just say I wouldn't refer to our communication style as effective. For example, if we are texting and I respond K instead of OK, I fully expect him to know that I am mad and address it. If I send a long and thoughtful text and he responds OK, he's in trouble. Early in our relationship, I found this article titled 36 Questions to Fall in Love. It claimed to accelerate the kind of personal closeness that it normally takes much longer to create. I was optimistic until we got to question number 11, which read, take four minutes and tell your partner your life story in as much detail as possible. Andrew went first. And when the four minutes was up, I was so interested in what he was saying, I suggested he continue. Two hours later, he was still talking, and I was looking for a polite way to exit the conversation and his living room. I wasn't sure if he was ever going to wrap it up. I was thinking, how many lives has this man lived? Is he a cat? After we got married, you would think the communication between us would naturally improve, but we had our struggles. Some people think it's so cute when newlyweds finish each other's sentences. I assure you, my husband did not think it was cute. I try to finish his sentences all the time, and he had the nerve to think that I'm just interrupting him. Hypothetically speaking, if I were interrupting him, it would only be because I have a better ending to his sentence, and I simply want the best for him. For more than a year, we listened to country music in the car. Not because either of us liked country music, but because when I would say, babe, you can change the station, he would respond, oh, this is okay. Until one day I said, can we please listen to something else? This is getting old. He looked at me and said, I thought you liked country music. If I summed up, Every fight Andrew and I have ever had, it would read failure to communicate. The fact that he communicates for a living is not lost on me. I fully admit I am the problem. I wish I could blame it on my parents, but I can't. My mom and dad were married for 49 years. Not only did they love each other, they liked each other too. Or maybe it was their fault for not teaching me how to argue. They left me ill prepared for all the fights life had in store for me. They also told me that I was brilliant often enough that I believed them. And I translated that to mean that people would listen when I spoke. And they genuinely wanted to hear what I had to say. So I should share everything I'm thinking with the world. I am a millennial in my defense. So I grew up with helicopter parents constantly telling me that I could do anything I set my mind to. If my husband would just keep a drawer full of blue participation ribbons nearby and give them to me from time to time, we would both be much happier. Andrew is part of Generation X, though. The independent latchkey kids who learned how to fend for themselves. My husband's greatest fear is what legacy he will leave behind. My greatest fear is waving back at someone who was waving at someone else. 
Now we communicate back and forth using videos. Our text message history is just a bunch of TikToks we've sent each other while sitting in separate rooms. I don't even watch them anymore unless I hear him laugh first. If opposites do attract, we are a match made in heaven. If not, we're both hard headed enough. We'll make it work anyway. I'll admit I married up way out of my league. Communication isn't exactly our strong suit, but we make up for it in other ways. For example, we have mastered the bedroom. At the end of the day, when we find ourselves lying in bed and the mood is just right for some intimacy, that's when the magic happens. The laughing, that is. We spend so much time in bed laughing. Over the years, we've accumulated several inside jokes, and we both enjoy healthy banter and a good pun. And they come out as soon as our heads hit the pillows. I honestly believe that laughter is the best medicine. It's worked well for us, at least. Relationships are hard work. We can all strive to reach the professional level, but let's face it, there's only one Michael Jordan. He is arguably the best basketball player of all time, but he didn't win games on his own. It takes a team to win. There's no I in team, but there are two I's in communication. And for that, I'll hold out hope. Contest chair.